Monday nights on 10 p.m. on NBC, and later in the week on our streaming platform, Peacock, it's hosted by my co-host, Mr. Jimmy Fallon. He also hosts The Tonight Show on NBC. Take it away, Jimmy. Oh, hey there. Good evening. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. We've got the very best guy, Harry. I was sacrificing the greatest guy, Amanda. Harry owes me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. That's right, we do have a few safety rules to go over. First, if you need guest assistance, if you have a medical emergency, if you drop anything of value off the side of the tram, or if you have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab that red emergency cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it is safe to do so. During the entire tour, please, Remain seated. Keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use that red cord above your head if you need assistance. The studio is private property. If at any time you drop your phone or you just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the red cord and but remain seated. Please no smoking or vaping of any kind while at work. On our tour today, there will be sudden tram movements, fire effects, loud noises, 
and water effects. You want to have your camera out for all the great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on it so it doesn't get wet. Finally, for the safety of you and for the safety of those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while on board the train. Now, as we descend the hill into our working production studio, we've been on this site for over 100 years. You can see on either side of our tram movie posters that represent some of the thousands of movies we've made on this site since we opened our doors back on March 15, 1915. Our founder, Carl Lemley, said he wanted to make the strangest city in the world, Universal City. And we are a city. We have our own firehouse that we're passing right now on our right-hand side. Everybody's working hard every day to make those music videos, commercials, TV shows, and movies that you know and love. We started on this plot of land with only 200 acres. Mr. Lemley purchased a chicken ranch in San Fernando Valley. We've expanded to more than twice that size since we opened our gates to over 400 acres, making us the largest production studio in LA. We're currently undergoing a great deal more expansion, as you can see on our left-hand side, as we turn into our front lot. Our front lot is home to our administrative offices, our production facilities like sound and editing suites, and most of our 36 sound stages currently filming on the lot right now. We have the Kelly Clarkson Show, The Voice, shows like Max, for HBO Max, starring two-time Emmy Award winner Gene Smart, and Lose for Apple TV, starring Maya Rudolph. Both of those two shows are shot in conjunction with Universal Television. Well, so for NBC, we have the sitcoms Lopez vs. Lopez, American Auto, and Grand Crew. And for our streaming platform, Peacock, we have Bel Air. A dramatic retelling of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the 90s sitcom starring Jamari Banks and Ali Sholaton. And those two very talented actors want to say a few things before we get going. Did you just grab your water when you pour some as you put egg on, on the cheese, you put cheese on the eggs, on the cheese, and it's fine. Whoa, I'm going to see some bigger. No, it's gotta be a lot. Yeah. We could probably fit the whole Bel Air cast and crew in here. You know, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. I'm begging for sure. You're lucky for y'all. The Banks Family Mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? I don't know. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I would love to blow yourself when Will first enters. At that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here too, and I remember you having me sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was really fun. I can't feel my toes. No, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talent to crew and put it all together. The air, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Yes. You know, transport is the best. And they have the sweetest rides for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're going to get a ride like this, we better go talk to Transport now and let this people get back to the tour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. It's one rocket to drive. Oh, not if I've got keys. Oh, 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 man. NBC has a very long history of producing hit TV shows spanning back more than 80 years, beginning with the transmission of the opening ceremonies of the World's Fair back in 1939, when there were only 200 television sets in existence. Since then, we've been responsible for some of the most popular and longest-running TV shows, many of which were filmed right here on the lot. our first celebrity sighting, the Minions, pointing out Illuminations Entertainment animation offices, which are also here on the back lot. They're responsible for the number one hit movie, Super Mario Brothers, number one at the box office for three weeks in a row.
to film that really honors this incredible film. It's a great, fun experience at the cinema. It's a terrific movie. You should check it out. On our left hand side right now are production bungalows. Once upon a time they were dressing rooms for our contract players during Hollywood's golden age. Folks like Ron Hudson and Doris Day would use them as a home away from home while they were filming projects on the lot. Now they're production offices to Hollywood Investor Friday. We just passed seven bucks productions, that's the way the Rock Johnson's production company. facilities like sound stages for interior shooting and turn on to our back lot where it's large-scale exteriors for outdoor filming beginning with our metropolitan sets here on the right hand side metropolitan for cityscape this four acre plot of land we have city exteriors that we can use for any city in the world london tokyo cleveland boca de starting with our Brownstone Street, right here across the plaza. The Brownstone Street has been used for films like the Oscar-winning Sting, for films like uh, Home Alone 2, or TV shows like The Mini Project or Quantum Leap. We have two types of sets on the universal back lot, facades and practical sets. Facade is a French word meaning false front. These sets can only be used for exterior filming. The other sets are practical sets they can be used for exterior and interior shots. We'll be showing you an example of both kinds of sets on today's tour. And as we turn the corner, we find ourselves in Courthouse Square. The location for Back to the Future starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. That's the that's the famous warehouse right there on our left hand side. The building on our left looks a little different than the building on your screen because those columns are still behind that facade of brick. It's actually not a brick wall, it's just, it's just the front of bricks. Change the appearance of our sets for all the different films and TV shows we, we film on this location so we can use them over and over again. Let's look at how we've used Courthouse Square over the years. I've already mentioned Back to the Future. Also used it for Psycho 2. The Hospital Award winning film to kill a mockingbird. Bruce Almighty, starring Jim Carrey. And Back to the Future 2, we've built a pond right here in front of the courthouse. Now we say goodbye to Hill Valley and Back to the Future 2, and we're going to turn the corner and find ourselves across the country on New York Street. New York Street is one of the most popular locations within the Metro sets. My co-host Jimmy Fallon has some strong opinions about living and working in New York City. Take it away, Jimmy. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York City. Right in my life. This is my old neighborhood. What's that bug over there? My old one. Tough lady. Who's my favorite hot dog guy? Hey buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Cool guys. 
was just, you know, just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. So you can't always believe your eyes, uh, as you guys evidenced by that previous video. What appears to be mortar and brick is really just plywood and plaster. Uh, these are all fake movable, movable sets. They're just the fronts. We only build what the camera can see. This has been used very popularly for TV shows, most recently for American Ninja Warriors. Their obstacle courses filled these streets for more than a month. It's also been used for NCIS 24. How I Met Your Mother. And now we say goodbye to the cityscapes of the metro sets and the concrete jungle and say hello to the equatorial jungle of Skull Island and King Kong. Here's Academy Award winning director Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong that made me want to do it in movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in nature. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universe invited me back to Skull Island. And it's great to have you along for the ride. Now, we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. Please remain seated at all times. Keep a firm grasp on your personal belongings. And remember, flash photography is prohibited while we're indoors. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of Kong, and he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster. You know, he is an incredibly majestic, ancient creature. He's a force of nature. He's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart.
terrific drive and we survive Skull Island. Hang on to those PD glasses. We'll need them again later in the tour. I will let you know when. Keep going. 360 PD is projected in some of the world's largest digital PD screens, spanning over 40 feet tall and 180 feet wide. Utilizing some of the most advanced technology in filmmaking today, the film was designed by Peter Jackson and the team at Weta FX. The filmmakers at Weta have won seven Academy Awards and have films like King Kong, Planet of the Apes, and Lord of the Rings, and Avatar. Hey, Jack, what's your name? At the moment when our tram was pulled off its track and projected onto the giant screen of King Kong 360 3D, it became what we know in the industry as a picture car. And we've amassed quite a collection of picture cars over the years of our history. We're going to share some of our favorites with you right now. Coming up on our left-hand side. Picture cars can be used in all kinds of ways, the vehicles you see on screen. They can be used to connotate time, location, era, even what the character wants and desires, just by the design of the vehicle. Speaking of design, check out the crazy design of Back to the Future 2 cars, or the whimsy of these Flintstones vehicles. How about a little magic for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? notice something's missing from the, our Jurassic World gyrosphere. It has no plexiglass dome that was added in post-production as a computer-generated image. And here's my favorite on the left, the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. looks like steel and rivets. It's actually plywood and plastic. So we can pick it up and move it with the cameras and blow it up and put it back together again. Look at how we use picture cars in the movies. Someone has pulled the emergency cord. If it's a medical emergency, please pull it again. Okay, please sit tight, raise your hand, and I'll be back to assist you in just a moment. We'll just need a minute or two to address the situation. We're going to move forward in the meantime and continue with uh, our next location on our tour where we have a special guest to introduce. Take it away, John. Welcome. What surrounds you are original prompts, set pieces, and picture cards from the original trilogy of films, Jurassic Park, including the mobile lab from Jurassic Park, The Lost World on our left, and the many dinosaurs in our cages. Okay, these dinosaurs seem to be empty. Uh, be on the lookout for lost dinosaurs. They might be wandering around.
well but whole, pointed straight towards the sky, falling naturally the ground. sets from old Mexico from films like Nacho Libre, Three Amigos, and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, or TV shows like Westworld. And now we say goodbye to old Mexico and hello to the old west. Welcome to Six Points, some of the most historic sets on the lot. We're going to pause here for just a second and take care of that uh, passenger that needs assistance. They've been used since the silent era of the 1920s. Universal has a very long history of producing Western films. Let's look at how these sets have been used through the years. As we pull forward out of our western sets, I want to uh, point your attention to the left as we make our turn. Some of the newest sound stages on the lot, including Sound Stage 31, home of the voice for season 23. to the 1950s, Universal Studios became known as the Monster Movie Studio, primarily because of the location we're about to visit, Little Europe. Little Europe we can make look like anything, from Transylvania for Dracula, Egypt for the Mummy, or even the afterlife from the NBC hit comedy The Good Place a couple years ago. Take a look. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, I have never ever seen. Yes, you're in a good place. I'm not supposed to be here. Keep us going to the bad place. Maybe it's not all bad. What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. You can catch all four seasons of The Good Place on our streaming platform, Peacock. If you 
you don't know it, you should check it out. It's a terrific show. You might also know these sets from Little Europe, from uh, The Princess Diaries 2, because this is Genovia. It's also the fairy tale kingdom of Rock's Never Sad Cinderella, starring Brandy and Ricky Houston. Or more recently, is the setting of the mysterious Benedict Society on Disney Plus. But I know and love these sets from those great monster movies. Stay seated during the entire tour. The studio is private property. If you drop your phone or you just can't wait to use the restroom, please pull that red cord to get my attention. I'll be back to assist you, but remain seated while aboard on the tram. One of the reasons I love those old monster movies is I can see the inspiration of our current crop of monster movies, films like Jurassic Park or Jaws, where we're going to be edited in just a few minutes. When you hold up those movies side by side, you can see how one relates to the other. Take a look.
they use that actual set on an episode of Bones for Fox Television. <laughs> To a beautiful day. What do you say we head to the beach? Right at the perfect spot on Amity Island, a small New England town that's been haunted lately by a great white like shark. But that's over the past. They have the culprit right there in the middle of the night. Hang on. Is that a fit in the water? Our Shark Harbor is Cabot Cove because for 12 very successful seasons in the 1980s, it was the filming location of the drama from CBS, Murder, She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury. Just goes to show you that even our sets play different characters here on the lot at Universal Studios. And now we say goodbye to our Shark Harbor and hello to the residential area on our back lot, our neighborhoods for filming locations, beginning our chicken ranch up at the top of the hill on the right hand side. Our chicken ranch is a perfect example of a practical set, as I mentioned earlier, where you can film the inside, outside, upstairs, and downstairs in this Victorian mansion. Use your dramas, musicals, TV shows, and movies. Most recently, for an episode of Quantum Leap, starring Raymond Lee, he opened the door to find that he was suddenly in 1930s upstate New York. And now we turn the corner onto Colonial Street, one of the most popular filming locations on the back lot. It's its own self-contained suburban neighborhood. The advantages to filming here are numerous. We can move these houses anywhere we like, make it into an empty lot if we need to, change their color, change the era by changing the street lamps, the mailboxes. We just passed 1313 Mockingbird Lane from the Munsters. Also Davies House from Never Have I Ever, the hit Netflix comedy produced in connection with Universal Television, coming for its fourth and final season on June 4th to Netflix. Look at some of the films and TV shows that we've made here on Columbia Street. 
starting with the verb, starting, uh, starring Tom Hanks. We've also used it for music videos. This one's from uh, Nelly. The TV shows like Desperate Housewives. Put a little pin in that one. I'll come back to Desperate Housewives in a moment. And comedies like Animal House from the 1980s. Street might be most famous for being Wisteria Lane, the primary filming location for Desperate Housewives for all eight seasons of that terrific hit show from ABC and Mark Cherry. because we're on Wilderness Road. We have 80 acres of wilderness in our back lot. Sometimes the script demands that the character be stranded in the middle of nowhere, and our middle of nowhere is a lot closer to a restroom, has better security, and a lot fewer wild animals. Though, just a couple days ago, we didn't have a coyote waltzing right beside the tram, so you never know what you're gonna see in the back lot. This was the site of an overturned limousine for an episode of 911, starring Angela Bassett for Fox Television recently. And that limousine would be another picture car. And we're going to show you some more of our picture car collection coming up here on our right hand side. Beginning with Mr. Bean's Mini Cooper and Bumblebee from the Transformers. And a whole fleet of vehicles from the Fast and the Furious franchise, including Don Toretto's famous black Dodge Charger. I hope you're ready to see a lot more from the Fast and the Furious because their latest film. Fast and the Furious 10 hits theaters in just a few days on May 19th. And now we round the corner off the main highway to a little out of the way motel with 12 cabins and 12 vacancies. It's the Bates Motel, the site of the Alfred Hitchcock thriller Psycho, starring Anthony Perkins, Anthony, Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee. Looks like the manager of the Bates Motel, Norman Bates, is right there. Oh boy. But I can't tell what he's up to. It doesn't look like anything good. Oh no. We have another. If that's an emergency, emergency, please pull the cord again. Raise your hand and I'll be right back. moments after we witness this terrible crime. Look out! house here on our left hand side a perfect example of forced perspective and the house gets shorter as it gets taller making it look appear larger for the film and now from one of the oldest standing sets in hollywood to one of the most impressive it's war of the worlds directed by steven spielberg Thank you. 
Remember to pull that emergency cord if you need any assistance, but please remain seated at all times. What surrounds you is an actual Boeing 747 aircraft purchased in a decommissioned airplane yard out of the Mojave for $60,000. Quite a deal for a aircraft. They chopped it over the big pieces and put it on flat night trucks and they get to the back lot, charging the production company $200,000. They always get it with shipping and handling. It's been Universal's honor to collaborate with generational defining directors like Steven Spielberg, and we continue that tradition with Academy Award winning director Jordan Peele as he explains this location of this recent film. No. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Claim, a nostalgic, small-time, Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Jupiter Park. Over there, look into the winking room and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kid share. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. <laughs> 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 National crime boss Owen Shaw is after you, so we need the protection of our family. And Dom Toretto and his crew have told us to meet him here at Sullivan's Garage so they can protect us. Please remain seated at all times. Keep a firm grasp on your personal belongings. And remember, flash photography is prohibited while we're indoors.
Universal Studios has been thrilling audiences by making them laugh, cry, and sit at the edge of their seats. We're part of a huge filmmaking family here in Southern California made up of thousands of artists both in front and behind the camera who spent countless hours to bring these thrilling stories to the big and small screen just for you. We're nearing the end of our tour and I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. If you're an annual pass holder, thank you for coming back. If you're interested in becoming an annual pass holder, just head to Universal's box office where you can learn how you can upgrade today's admission or to become an annual pass holder so you can come back at the end of the Make sure you download Universal Studios Hollywood app where you can get the latest on park hours. Tonight we'll close at 10 p.m. You can get updates on show times. Don't miss Waterworld, it's terrific. You can also get details on rides and attractions and how you might be able to visit Super Nintendo World. On behalf of our driver, Amanda, and me, your guide, Perry, thank you for joining us today for this unique behind-the-scenes Hollywood experience. If you're interested in purchasing any of the film and TVs, TV shows that you've heard about on today's tour, just head to UPHD.com or ask at any one of our retail stores. Enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of L.A. And that is a wrap. Goodbye, everybody.